Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Jake Whip, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make these reflection effects inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now all of this can be done inside of DaVinci Resolve without using third party plugins, but in some situations it is better to use a 3D program like Blender. But anyways guys, before we get started, make sure you guys hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss out when I upload a new video just like this one. Also if you guys support me on Patreon, you guys can get the project files for this so that you guys can go ahead and practice this effect yourself. But anyways, let's get right into the video. So uh, I'm just in a new uh, project here and what I'm going to do is go ahead and grab down my fusion clip. So this is just on a ping pong table and there's a few like uh, little pins on here that we can use for camera tracking. Now, what you could do is also go through and remove those after the fact, but I'm not going to do it for this situation. Alright, so now that we're inside of Fusion, what we're going to do is go ahead and track first. And if you guys do not want to watch all the tracking, there are timestamps down on the playhead thing here on YouTube, and you guys can skip ahead to where I add the reflections. Let's go ahead and add in a camera tracker by doing Shift Space. And what we want to do actually before this is do Shift Space and type Unsharp Mask. And for this situation, uh, what this will help uh, is if we bring up the controls, it'll add more detail, okay? And that should just make it easier for this thing to track, okay? And if we view this and come up to the channels, we can view all the different individual channels and find which one has the most contrast. So I would say blue would have the most contrast. So we're going to go ahead and tell the tracker to track the blue channel. So inside of the tracker, come to the track channel and select blue. You can also do auto pre or uh, preview the auto track locations. All right. And this will pop up here in a second. You can see the few green dots. Let's go ahead and bring down the minimum feature selection uh, just so that we have a few more points. We can come to the beginning so it's easier to see that. And then we just want to come down here and do bi-directional tracking. Now if we had auto track, uh, what it'll do is it'll track forward. Once it gets to the end, it'll track it in reverse. This should give us a more accurate track, which is always good. All right, that's done. So now let's come over to the Solve tab and go ahead and click Solve. And this will take all of the tracking points and it'll calculate the motion of the camera. So now we have an average solve error of 0.65. Now you for sure want to get this under 1, but around like 0.2 is good. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to do 0.6. So I'm just going to delete my Uncharted Mask because we no longer need that. And in the Camera Tracker, let's come over to the Export and then click Export. And what this does is it will uh, create a whole 3D scene for us that has a camera, a point cloud, which is going to be all the tracking uh, markers in 3D space here. All right, as you can see that. And then a ground plane that we will position. So let's go ahead and move the Camera Tracker off to the side and bring the uh, Camera Tracker Render into the Media Out. And that will uh, be the same thing, except now the ground plane is in the view. Just so we can see the ground plane a little bit better, let's grab a background node, do shift space and add a grid, and then a luma here, okay? And what this will do is it'll make a grid that is transparent. Now, usually you could just come into the background, make it transparent, and as you can see, uh, it, the grid would be transparent right away. But for some reason, this will not appear in the 3D viewport unless you do it using the luma here. So it's just an extra step that you have to do for some reason. I'm not sure why. But now let's put that into the ground plane and uncheck wireframe on the ground plane and bring the color to white. Now if you view the merge, as you can see, we can see the ground plane right back here. So let's go ahead and get this all uh, lined up correctly, okay? So this is going to be the table, um, all of these points right here. And what we can do is come into the point cloud and then change this from cross to point, all right? And bring the size down. And that way it's just a little smaller and easier to see. And to verify that this is the table, we can click on the camera tracker and we can just select some of these points here. And as you can see, there's some that highlight right in the middle here. Okay. But anyways, let's come back over into our uh, ground plane and go ahead and move this. Let's come into the ground plane and go ahead and drag this out. And what we want to do is just get this kind of positioned right in the middle. And then we can rotate off of this center point. Okay, so that's looking good. Now let's come over to the transform and go ahead and add some rotation. All right, we'll just try and get this lined up as close as possible. And the reason why we want this to be good is I want to have shadows being cast on the table. So in order for the shadow to not be moving around that much, uh, we must have a ground plane um, or something for the shadow to cast on that is staying in its position. All right, so that's looking pretty good already, but as you can see, uh, that this one's moving a little bit and it ends up covering the pin, all right? Let's go ahead and zoom in up here and go ahead and figure out what is wrong. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave it at this. It is not a perfect uh, solve by any means, but it'll uh, work for this tutorial, okay? 
But anyways, now that that is done, or kind of done, let's go ahead and grab our media in and just hold on shift and we'll disconnect it from the camera and merge it up from the camera tracker over here. This will just make something easier uh, later on when we're working on getting the shadow. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the reflections, okay? So let's go ahead and grab a shape, all right? And this could be an FPX mesh or whatever you guys want. Let's go ahead and plug this into the media out and I'm set this to, uh, uh, let's do a cube, okay? The cube will look kind of cool. And what we'll do is come to 3D space here and we'll position it so it's right above the table. So we'll bring the, we'll bring the size down a lot. And now that that's done, let's go ahead and start working on the material. So first up, we're going to need a ward, all right? So if you guys are doing other textures, you'll put all your textures into the ward. And then the ward will come into the reflect, okay? And you guys can also put some of the textures into here, like the bump map and whatnot. But now that we have the reflect, what we want to do is grab our, uh, uh, our 360 image, okay? And we'll put that into a sphere map. And now if we put that into the reflection, uh, the color and material, and then put that into our shape, uh, we will now have, as you can see, a little bit of reflection in it. So let's come into the reflect, okay? And just bring the face on strength all the way up, as well as the glancing strength. This will make it so it's completely reflective, all right? Now let's go ahead and go through here, and we need to get uh, the reflection map lined up. So let's come uh, after the media end and do transform. And what we can do is actually set the uh, shape to a sphere right now, so it'll be a little bit easier to see, okay? So that's a sphere. We'll go ahead and bring the radius down until it's about right like that. Okay. Now inside of the transform, set the uh, edges to wrap. And now if we go ahead and move this, as you can see, it'll just shift our image around. So this logo on the back, uh, that is going to be the wall that um, is the camera is facing. So we need to move this around. Okay. Something like that looks pretty good. We can even bring it up or down if needed. All right, let's go ahead and leave it like that. And now if we go ahead and play that, as you can see, the reflections will update based on where the camera is at. Or we could come over to the viewer here and pan around, and as you can see, that is working correctly. I'm actually going to leave it at the sphere because I kind of like that look better. So now let's go ahead and work on our shadow mat. So we have our image with the uh, uh, reflective item, okay? And I want this to cast a shadow onto the ping pong table here, okay? So let's go ahead and disconnect the Luma keyer from the ground plane. This will create it uh, into a solid then, okay? And now let's go ahead and grab a spotlight and go ahead and hook this up. And now with the spotlight, let's come over to the transform, do use target, okay? And now if we go ahead and drag this back on the z-axis, we have this uh, little point that the light will always face. All right, so let's go ahead and drag this up. And what we'll do is we'll center this inside of our sphere, okay? So there we go, that's pretty good. And now in the view, let's go right click, do 3D options, and then do shadows. So now that will enable both lighting and shadows, okay? Now let's go ahead and drag up our cam. Now let's come into the spotlight, go ahead and bring up the Y, okay? And now we can grab it, and we can go ahead and move it around so that it is uh, casting down from the top. All right, there we go. And what we want to do is we want to get this as close to it as possible, okay? And this will make it so that it speeds up render time. Let's go into the camera tracker and go ahead and do lighting and shadows. And so if you watch this, uh, as the light gets closer, the shadow will become higher resolution. And if it's way up here, it'll cause it to be a lot longer of render time. So let's bring it kind of close and then come in here and just bring up the cone angle. So there we go. And now let's come into the shadows. And now we can just do up the shadow map size a little bit uh, until it's about, I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna do about that for my shadow map size because we're gonna end up blurring it after the fact. So now what we gotta do is make it so that the white here is transparent, okay? And how we have to do that is we have to set up a separate render pass. So let's go ahead and copy our uh, merge and camera tracker. Go ahead and paste that over here, all right? And now we can merge this up on top. And what we'll do um, is go ahead and take the, our camera and put that into the merge. We'll take the ground plane and uh, have that only in the merge 3D. And then we'll have the spotlight coming into the merge, and then we will also have the shape coming into the merge. But with the shape, let's go ahead and do shift space and type override. And now if we plug the shape into the override and the override into the merge, and then do unseen by camera, what this will do is it'll make it so that you can still see the shadow, but you can't see the object. So let's come over to the ground plane and then come into the material. And what we'll do is uncheck lighting, okay? Um, and now what we have to do is in the merge here that's connecting this up is change the apply mode to multiply. 
Now as you can see, it will composite that shadow over our image. And what this is, is this just a separate render pass, okay? So that means that we can come over here and add a blur node. And now let's view the media out. And what we can do is we can blur this to make it so it's kind of like a soft shadow, okay? We can also play with the opacity. So there we go. Let's do something like that. Uh, we could even make this a little more intense maybe. There we go. Uh, so now we just have a nice shadow that is being cast down onto our ping pong table. So now we can go ahead and render this out and then we have our final effect. Well, here's the final effect guys. I hope you guys really like this. Uh, I think it looks pretty good and the reflection as you can see is mapping around the circle and it looks really cool. Let me know what you guys use this for down in the comments below and if you guys enjoyed make sure to like the video, subscribe, as well as turn on notifications so you never miss out when I upload a new video. Again, consider supporting me on Patreon so that you guys can get all the assets for this tutorial so you guys can follow along and get a bunch of other cool project files. Well anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time for another video.